Scholar once wrote, the grandeur of Borbadur is something immense, sphinx-like, incomprehensible, and yet so fascinating. It overpowers with a sense of our own incapacity to give a description. Its enigmas are too many and too great for us to solve. And yet it exercises such a powerful charm, lays such a hold on the mind, that we are irresistibly compelled to use all our powers to discover something of its mysterious being. And that does it describe, as we said, a Bora Badur. And the Bora Badur Temple standing behind me. And greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Jamie's Journey. And today uh, we are journeying in Indonesia. We are on the island of Java and the country of Indonesia comprises of, is comprised of uh, 13,000 uh, different islands and we are right smack dab in the middle of Java. And we're just a couple hour drive from the port of Semarang which is where uh, cruise ship passengers would uh, uh, enter to come to uh, Bora Badur. This is the number one uh, tourist attraction in all of Indonesia and it is the most important uh, Buddhist site in the world. So we're gonna tell you about it, take you up on the hill, and give you a look at the Borbadur Temple here in Java, Indonesia. Well, we're going to get started and make our way up to the Temple of Borobudur. But first, we thought we'd kind of show you what we're going to be looking at today. Here is the temple, resembling, if you look from above, a lotus flower uh, floating on a lake. And if you look at the uh, Hindu art, most Hindu art has the lotus flower depicted in it. We're going to enter from the east side. And then uh, what you're supposed to do is called circumambulate the temple or uh, go around it in a clockwise direction and this gets into uh, Hindu tradition uh, that methodology is tough for me to say but it's a pradaksina and uh, so that is what you would normally do to make your way up to the top levels now there's ten levels and uh, we're not going to practice that way of going up we're going to uh, do different uh, levels and take different shots but uh, here are the levels here, so you basically it's broken up into the, what's called the foot, which is the lower level, the body, which are then six levels, and then the top level, which is where we'll find what are called stupas that we'll tell you about, uh, that is three levels, and then the very top of the temple is uh, nirvana, and that would be the tenth level. So uh, that's uh, kind of what we're going to do. Also, we're going to talk a little bit later about the hidden foot. <laughs> And the hidden foot will be is this part uh, of the temple, and we're going to finish up there before we wrap it up today. So it's time to get started and make our way up the hill to Borbadur. <laughs> Now 
Just uh, coming up the stairs, I uh, met a group of students who are here, and this is their teacher. These are French teachers, and she is English teachers. And she is too, yeah. And uh, these young ladies are learning uh, French, English, English, Japanese, Japanese, Arabic, Indonesian, Indonesian, Japanese. Uh, very bright students, and they're visiting today, and uh, so we just had a nice talk with them, yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much for yeah. your time. It was nice to speak with you. Well, this is indeed a massive structure. You know, there's no written record of uh, really who built Borbadur, why it was built, what the intended purpose was, although, uh, so therefore there is a lot of uh, conflicting theories about this. What the experts do agree is that they figure it took about 75 years to create and dates back to the 8th century. And over the years, there have been over 500 studies done on Borbadur. You know, for centuries, this great structure was deserted. It was actually uh, reclaimed by the jungle. It was covered in ash and uh, was literally lost. Now, no one knows for sure why it was deserted, but there are two prevailing uh, theories. One was that, we show you Mount Merapi, which is a volcano, that actually has erupted on two other occasions, uh, 928 and also 1006. And it is believed that maybe due to the ash that fell in this area, uh, it basically killed the crops and created a famine. And because of that, the people of central Java had to go somewhere else to get their food. Another theory is that uh, this being a Hindu structure, is that a Buddhist structure, excuse me, uh, that when there was a fall in Buddhism and Hinduism and a rise in Islam in the 14th century, they believe that this possibly also just may no longer have become important anymore and as a result was no longer cared for and was abandoned and fell into disrepair. Well, the person who gets credited for discovering the site is a gentleman named Sir Thomas Raffles, and uh, he was the Lieutenant Governor for Britain on the island of Java in uh, the early 1800s. He was told by the local people of a structure that was in the jungle that they referred to as Bodur. And so he sent a contingent of 200 people with a gentleman named H.C. Cornelius. And they came to this area and basically they really discovered it, although Raffles gets credit for it. In fact, Raffles never even set foot here. But they took 200 men and took six weeks to clear uh, this whole site, uh, working with 200 men, and uh, really uncovered this for the first time in centuries. The first photo of Borobudur was taken in 1873, and it was really that photo that brought this site into uh, the mines of the world. Well, this really is phenomenal. And we've stepped up from the base 
to the body, which is these actually six levels up from here. And each of them contains these magnificent reliefs. And they're on, they're on both sides as you walk uh, around. But uh, these are 20, just under 2,700 different reliefs. Now they said that when they built the temple, what they did is that they uh, brought stones up from uh, the rivers. In fact, Borbidur is built between two volcanoes. It's built between two rivers. And there's actually three temples and they are all aligned. But what they say is that when they built these stones, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, that this facade was all flat. And so what they did is that they put the stones in and then they carved out these reliefs, which obviously tell a, a great story of uh, Buddhism. But they are just uh, phenomenal. We're just gonna take our time and show you some of the sights as we walk on. There's 504 Buddha statues, and here's an example of a few of them. Each panel is telling a story. Well, that's a shot of what's called the Kedu Plain, which is uh, a sacred uh, land here in Java. In fact, it's uh, also called the Javanese Garden. That's because the land is so lush and the f soil is just so fertile. It took, uh, they say, two million blocks of stone to make this magnificent temple. Uh, they say it's 55,000 cubic feet of stone. Now it all came from the rivers and it was all hand cut in the river bed itself and they were then hand carried over to this temple and uh, the measurement unit that is used for these blocks they said is called the Tala. Now they found examples of the Tala in other monuments uh, let's say uh, Anger Wat for one but also the other two uh, temples that are this is lined up with also have the same measurement. The tala is this measurement. Now it's different on each person, but essentially what it is, it's from the forehead where the hair is supposed to end. <laughs> Mine, I would have a big tala. From the forehead down to the chin. And that distance with your fingers all the way stretched out is said to be the measurement for the stones. Each one identical. You know, the whole design of this temple is so ingenious. Now this area does get a lot of rainfall, as you can see by the jungle uh, out there. So when it rains, where does the water go? Well, if you, when you walk around, you'll see all these gargoyle-like figures. This is the drainage. Each level has these gargoyles on it. And so the water comes through the gargoyle from one level down to the next level. And then you say, well then, where does it go from this level? Well, from where I'm standing here, just a few feet away, it goes out just on the other side.
right, so this is the, the, we started with the foot, the body, and now we're sending up to the head. And uh, the first structures, as we said, were square from the base and the body, those six levels. And now these next three levels, as you can see, they are all round. And they have uh, 72 what are called stupas. And we're gonna go up and take a look at these because they are beautiful. All right, here is uh, just one of the 72 stupas that adorn these three levels. And this one is without the, its bell. And so you can see it very good. A lot of this, these though, again, the heads have been taken off, some of them. This one, the head has been uh, reattached, but it gives you a good example of what's inside. Well, if you uh, reach this part on the monument, you uh, have reached the level of Nirvana. And inside the stupa here is, there's nothing inside. It's just hollow, unlike uh, these perforated ones uh, with the uh, Buddhas inside. You know, if you started at the base and you walked around and around and around and all the way up, they say that's a, about a five kilometer walk. Not too two and a half miles uh, to get here. So it's, a, it's quite a climb, uh, but hey, if once you get here, you reach the state of Nirvana, it's worth the trip. Well, we've come down now, and I'm about ready to sit in the shade and have a nice, cool drink. But before we go, I did want you to know that starting in uh, 1973 to about 1984, there was $21 million invested in this monument, uh, and that's what it took to bring it back to the days of its old glory. And I think you'll agree it is one magnificent temple. 1991, it was awarded as a UNESCO heritage site. And uh, since then, uh, it has become a pilgrimage for Buddhists around the world, as well as travelers like myself coming from all over the globe to see it. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed your visit, some of the sights and the history behind Borobudur. Thanks for traveling with me again on Jamie's Journeys, and I hope you come travel with me again. Thank you.